Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the online meeting of uh, State Terrorism and the Black History of the Mujahideen al Kalk, also known as MEK and MKO. I'm your host, Ali Rezvanpour, political expert and analyst. I'm honored to be with you today with this meeting focusing on the issue of state-backed terrorism. Well, uh, to begin with, uh, I would like to provide you with a definition of the term uh, state-backed or state-sponsored terrorism is uh, terrorist violence carried out with the active support of national governments provided to uh, violent non-state actors. Uh, states can sponsor terrorist groups in several ways, including but not limited to uh, funding terrorist organizations, uh, providing training, supplying weapons, providing other logistical and intelligence assistance, and hosting groups within their borders. Uh, because of the pejorative nature of the word uh, of uh, state-backed terrorism, uh, the identification of uh, particular examples are often subject to political dispute and different definitions of terrorism. Now, to narrow down the topic of this meeting, uh, I should elaborate more on the heinous and black history of the Mujahideen al uh, a group formerly entitled as a Foreign Terrorist Organization, or FTO, uh, by European Union and the USA for years. Uh, the Mujahideen al also known as MEK, MKO, NCRI, NLA, and several other names and titles, once listed as a terrorist organization in the U.S. and Europe and is still uh, widely viewed as a Marxist Islamist cult built around the personality of its leader, Maryam Rajavi. This group is uh, holding annual gatherings in Europe every July for which they pay large sums of money to politicians, artists, celebrities, etc., to participate and to whitewash the terrorist nature of this group. This year's gathering was supposed to be on August 23rd, 2022, which was uh, later postponed by the Albanian government due to security warnings. Uh, this group was referred to as a terrorist group based on a CIA report and uh, that it has assassinated uh, several American uh, advisors based on the same uh, report of the CIA. Uh, also, there's another uh, report by New York Times. If you read this uh, report, you will realize how Maryam Rajavi has uh, deprived the group's members of their basics rights. The report uh, is titled Highly secretive Iranian rebels are holed up in Albania. They gave us a tour. Uh, Maryam Rajavi has forbidden uh, MEK members from having any contact with family members, having romantic relationships, and even having sexual thoughts. Uh, this propaganda group is now offering large sums of money to invite politicians to their annual gathering, uh, politicians who are mainly unaware of the true nature of the MEK or the Mujahideen al -Kalk. The U.S.-based RAND National Defense Research Institute's report entitled The Mujahideen al in Iraq, a Policy Conundrum, reveals the following facts about the Mujahideen al or the MEK. In uh, RAND's report, the MEK is described as an Islamist Marxist group that has once assassinated at least six American uh, citizens. The Mujahideen al uh, is also referred to as a cult and uh, a foreign terrorist organization that allied with the Iraqi dictator, uh, the infamous Saddam Hussein, uh, during the OIF uh, or Operation Iraqi Freedom. This group uh, fought along with Saddam against the Iranians and Kurds and uh, massacred a lot of Kurds in 
uh, Iraq and on the Iraqi soil. Uh, based on the RAND report, uh, several American citizens, including Lieutenant Colonel Lewis L. Hawkins, Colonel Paul Schaefer, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jack Turner, uh, Robert R. Krongrad, William C. Cottrell, and Donald G. Smith, were assassinated by uh, MEK terrorists. Uh, in addition, the report discloses that cult-like behaviors such as self-immolation and suicidal attacks were prevalent among MEK members for different strategies. Uh, clear examples of human rights violations are also mentioned in the report. Uh, the MEK and the Rajavis mandated celibacy and compulsory divorce. Uh, Maryam Rajavi and Masood Rajavi, however, uh, they actually did not divorce like other members. Inside the Mujahideen Akalq cult-like group, disagreeing with the leaders, listening to foreign radio stations, making personal phone calls, communicating with family members, and even having sexual thoughts are all forbidden by the group's leaders. Well, now uh, our uh, respected uh, guests today are uh, going to be as following. Mr. Olsi Jezeksi, the Canadian Albanian University professor, journalist and political commentator based in Malaysia. Danielle Pereira, journalist and political commentator uh, from Italy. Jerji Thanasi, a university professor and political commentator and a journalist from Albania. Dr. Robert Fantina, uh, the university professor, human rights activist, political commentator and journalist from Canada. And Jakob Meraji, the defected member of the MEK living in France. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to have your undivided attention uh, to listen to uh, Professor Olsi Jezeksi, our first speaker. Dear friends, Salam Alaikum. This is Dr. Olsi Jezeksi speaking uh, from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I'm originally an Albanian and a person who studies a lot uh, the history of Islam and uh, the clash between uh, Western colonialism and imperialism and the world of Islam. Now, as uh, many of you might know, uh, my country, my original country, Albania, since uh, the year 2013, has become uh, a base for the Mujahideen al halq terrorist organization an organization which uh, originated in Iran, which has committed many crimes and massacres against the Iranian people, which was used uh, by Saddam Hussein against Iran, and uh, which since the year 2013 uh, started to move out of Iraq, and at present it is in Albania. <laughs> Uh, this organization came to my country without the consensus of the people of Albania. For those of you who know how the Eastern European countries are run since the fall of the Soviet Union, uh, we have uh, the uh, U.S. embassies which decide about uh, what uh, our countries and politicians should do. And this is ha what happened with the Mujahideens in Albania. The first group of the Mujahideens came to Albania in 2013. And the final group of the Mujahideens came <laughs> to my country in the year 2016. Uh, it is a very interesting coincidence that uh, uh, in the year 2012, uh, the then Foreign Minister of Israel, Avigdor Lieberman, uh, opened the embassy of uh, Israel in Albania. So one year after the opening of the Israeli embassy, we have the first groups of the Mujahideens coming to Albania. After the Mujahideens came to Albania in 2013, 
in 2014, uh, the Albanian government was ordered by the U.S. Embassy in Tirana to create a special police uh, force known as the anti-terror police. Uh, this uh, police of uh, counter-terrorism is in a way like uh, you had, uh, for people who are from Iran, uh, you had the police of uh, Vevak, the secret police of Vevak, which was established by the Shah in order to persecute the Muslim community of Iran. So, in 2014, <laughs> we have uh, the counter-terrorism police uh, established in Albania. And then, in 2016, we will have uh, the bulk of the Mujahideens coming to my country, Albania. In the time, it was the U.S. Secretary of State, John Kerry, which brought the Mujahideen to Albania. When the Mujahideens uh, were brought to Albania, their coming or their presence caused a big uh, unhappiness and uproar in the country. Many journalists, many medias, many public personalities, they protested the Mujahideen presence in my country. There was no referendum, there was no voting in the parliament, but simply the Soros-backed Prime Minister of uh, Albania, Edi Rama, and uh, his uh, non-Muslim government uh, agreed to the dictate of Washington, and Albania became the first European country to host a terrorist organization on its soil. Now, <clears throat> in the year 2016, when the Mujahideens came to Albania, we have a mega operation by Mossad in November 2016, when a football match was going to be held between Albania and Israel in the city of Shkodra. Mossad claimed that Albanian Muslims were planning to kill Israeli football players, and they forced the Albanian authorities to make mass arrests. Now, with the chaos that Mossad created, even though uh, all the people who were arrested on orders of Mossad and Israel in Albania later were found to be innocent, now, what happened with the chaos that Israel created? <laughs> we had the Mujahideens who started to establish their presence in my country. In the year 2016, 2017, 2018, the Mujahideens faced many defections. Uh, uh, a police, uh, uh, a court document, which was released <laughs> by the special uh, 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 court of uh, Albania, uh, like a month ago, a document which was written by MAC and was used by an, our anti-terror police, to intimidate and harass the Mujahideen defectors. Among others, in this document, it was stated that since the coming of the Mujahideen in Albania, around 400 of them have left the organization. So, the year 2016, 2017, <coughs> uh, 2018 were a time of crisis for the Mujahideen presence in Albania. They had mass defections. Many Mujahideens managed to leave the organization. This thing created a lot of panic in the leadership of the Mujahideen cult. And with uh, funding from probably Saudi Arabia, or uh, the Americans, or Bahrain, or United Arab Emirates, the Mujahideens, they established their paramilitary camp of Manza in the town of Manza in the county of Duras in Albania. From 2018 <laughs> until today, the Mujahideens act in Albania as a state within a state. Uh, after establishing themselves in a military form in my country, the Mujahideens have started a very aggressive propaganda against Iran 
in Albania, but not only. Uh, the Mujahideens, they use the, their base of Manza as a center of propaganda and uh, terrorism against political Islam and in particular against the Islamic Republic of Iran. Now, during their presence in Albania, <coughs> the Mujahideens, they have been involved in many mediatic, political, and criminal scandals. Uh, some Mujahideen members have been caught by Albanian police raping little children. Others have been arrested and jailed for burglary, for breaking into people's properties and stealing them. And in uh, 2021, the Albanian police even <laughs> arrested two top Mujahideen uh, officials, among them Narges Abrishamchi, the sister of Mehdi Abrishamchi, who is the first husband of Mariam Rajavi. So she, together with one another Mujahideen, were caught smuggling drugs to Italy. The mu <coughs> Mujahideens have, <coughs> have built a network, <coughs> a mafia network, of uh, human and drug smuggling into Europe. The neighboring countries of Europe, Greece, and Italy in particular, are very concerned about the Mujahideen activity in Albania. Now, since the year 2018, <coughs> the Mujahideens have started to use their paramilitary base in the town of Manza, even to stage uh, uh, global meetings with their anti-Islamic and Zionist supporters who come from United States, Europe, and other parts of the world. And in their meetings, and especially in their yearly meeting that they call the Summit of Free Iran, the Mujahideens promote the imperialist agenda of United States and Israel against Iran. For people who follow and analyze uh, what happens in these meetings, uh, there are a number of things that the Mujahideens do through their meetings with these mainly Western officials. Number one <laughs> is that they attack the Islamic Republic of Iran, they attack the institution of uh, Vilayat al faqi they attack the religion of Islam, but they attack even uh, the unity of uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Separatist anti-Iranian groups like the Baluch movement, the Ahwaz movement, the Kurdish movement, etc., are invited into these meetings. And for the people who have read the 10 points of uh, Mariam Rajavi, Rajavi promises to the ethnic groups of Iran autonomy one day if Mariam Rajavi will take power. So, in few words, the policies of the Mujahideen towards Iran from Albania uh, follow what we in the West know and call the New Middle East Project. The New Middle East Project <coughs> is an American Zionist project which aims to destroy the nation states of the Middle East and mainly the hardcore Muslim states of the Ummah of Islam, Turkey, Egypt, Iraq, and Iran, and to divide them into small Bantustans. So, Mariam Rajavi <coughs> and her Mujahideen organization, they, in a way, support the Zionist and American program of dividing the countries of the Middle East, and in particular, dividing and destroying Iran that we know. So, the Mujahideens attack Islam, they also attack Iran. Now, since they're coming to Albania, 
Mariam Rajavi, apart from using Albania and her paramilitary base, as a base for launching uh, uh, mediatic and even terrorist attacks against the Islamic Republic, uh, their base is also being used by Israel in their attacks against the Islamic Republic. Probably <coughs> you know better than me what MEC does from Albania against the Islamic Republic. <laughs> now, uh, a question that many of you might have is, what is the role of Albania in all of this? We can say that the Albanian government very often does not know what the Mujahideen do in their camp. Uh, the activities of the Mujahideens from Albania against Islam, and in particular Iran, <laughs> are mainly coordinated by the U.S. Embassy and Israeli Mossad. Now, another problem that the Mujahideens have been facing since they came to Albania, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is the mass defections. There are hundreds of people who have abandoned Mariam Rajavi. For you who know <laughs> the, the working and the nature of the Mujahideen cult, uh, you know very well that the people who enter into this cult, they are not allowed to live as free human beings. They are kept as slave soldiers. They are radicalized with the ideology of the Rajavi cult. They are not allowed to marry. They are not allowed to work, to have families, to have pension, and what have you. And as a result, we have hundreds of ex-Mujahideens who simply have abandoned the terrorist organization of Mariam Rajavi. While around 300 ex-Mujahideens <coughs> nowadays they are free in Europe and they follow a civilian life, in Tirana, Albania, there is a hardcore of Mujahideen defectors, people who denounce in the Albanian society what MEC does. Since 2018, <laughs> MEC has launched a war against the defectors. She, uh, Mariam Rajavi and her cult, they have asked the help of the Americans and Americans have demanded from the Albanian government so that the Albanian government will persecute any Iranian who speaks against MEC in Albania. The Albanian counter-terrorism police <laughs> uh, raided a few weeks ago the houses and an association of the defectors of MEC. There is a court case investigation against the defectors. The accusation that MEC launches against the defectors but even against the journalist or anyone who speaks against them is that these people should be agents of Iran. For people who follow the madness of the Mujahideen in Albania, they might know quite well that the Mujahideen, they attack everyone. They have attacked the British government, they have attacked the Belgian government, they attack uh, Western media channels, from BBC, The Guardian, The Independent, Channel 4. And in particular, the Mujahideens have been very successful on blackmailing Albanian medias. Until the year 2019, many Albanian journalists went to the Mujahideen camp and they investigated the weird nature of this cult. But since 2020, <coughs> no media in Albania dares to attack the Mujahideens. Top Mujahideen commanders, people like Mehdi Abrishamchi, Mariam Rajavi, uh, Jila Dehim, uh, Behzad Safari and others, they go to every TV station in Albania which dares to investigate them they blackmail them 
and in cases when the blackmail doesn't work, they corrupt them. The Mujahideens have been <laughs> very successful uh, since 2020 on silencing the media in Albania, on buying off the secret service, the police, the prosecutor office, and many officials and politicians in Albania. Mujahideens, they run a number of web portals in Albania through which they spread fake news against Iran and those people who dare to disclose and to share with the public the crimes of the Mujahideen organization. The Mujahideens have in general been successful in Albania on demonizing and destroying the relations of Albania with Iran. Uh, and this is for a reason. Uh, they have managed to co-opt the Albanian state with the support, of course, of Israel and the United States. Thank you very much indeed. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Olsi Jazeksi, and thank you, our dear viewers, for uh, being patient enough to listen to uh, Professor Jazeksi elaborating more on uh, the terrorist group of the MEK. Now our uh, second speaker is going to be Mr. Pereira, Daniel Pereira, journalist and political commentator from Italy. Good morning to everyone. Um, I'm very honored to have the possibility to speak in uh, such an important uh, event and I thank you very much for giving me this uh, opportunity. I personally believe and I'm sure of it that uh, Italian people and Iranian people are uh, close friends. Our people are um, actually historically friends. Unfortunately, some members of uh, maybe the majority of the Italian political elite uh, don't think in the same way. They don't believe. They don't believe so, or maybe they pretend that they don't uh, uh, believe what is uh, actually a, a matter of fact. Why they don't believe so? Italy, again, unfortunately, is not a sovereign country like Iran. Italy cannot really have a, an independent foreign policy. Italy is tied to the Atlantic uh, Alliance, Na uh, NATO, and uh, its territory is uh, occupied uh, by American military bases uh, since uh, 1945. Thanks to the American sanctions uh, to Iran, Italy lost more than 25 billion uh, in uh, trade agreements with the Islamic Republic. So, as we can see, Italian political leaders are uh, not even allowed to push uh, uh, the national interest. The Italian uh, national uh, interest is uh, subjected to the American geopolitical interests. Italy, in fact, cannot act independently in the field of international relations. Among these uh, Italian political uh, and intellectual uh, leaders, which think in a way that is completely the opposite with the real uh, national uh, interest, we had the, the former uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, Giulio Terzi. We are here to talk about uh, global threats and uh, global terrorism. Well, Giulio Terzi once uh, stated that uh, the organization uh, known as MEC, Mujahideen Hekalk, could be the potential core for a new Iranian government based on secularism, democracy and gender equality. We know quite, quite well the story of, uh, of MEC. They are responsible of many acts of uh, terrorism, assassination, uh, sabotage inside and outside Iran. They are responsible of uh, drug trafficking, money laundering, 
um, and they are even founding uh, in uh, not uh, an illegal uh, in uh, in an illegal way uh, some European political parties uh, such as the Spanish movement Vox, which is by the way a, a right wing movement, while uh, Mac is supposed to be a leftist. Uh, leftist uh, movement inspired by uh, Marxist-Leninist theory. Honestly, the statement of the former uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Giulio Terzi, makes me laugh. Makes me la it makes me laugh because eventually he... either he doesn't know the real story of this group, or he pretends that he doesn't know the story of this group. As I said before, uh, Mac was born as a Marxist-Leninist uh, uh, political organization. Um, in the years it became a, a sort of a religious cult uh, with no way to escape for uh, its members. Probably, again, he doesn't know, who he, or uh, he pretends that he doesn't know uh, that Mac Headquarter is uh, nowadays in Albania, close to the Italian coast. And in Albania, Mac is operating like a state inside the state. Mac is even working on uh, buying, speed, uh, buying a speedboat uh, to foster the illegal uh, immigration from the Balkans uh, to Italy and so on. Then Mac is a threat, not only to, to Iran but in a broader sense to Italy and uh, Europe as well. But again, the European political leaders uh, don't seem to care uh, that much. As we know, uh, nowadays where there are two main sponsor, uh, uh, sponsors of uh, global terrorism. One is United States and the other one is uh, Israel. Both they use uh, terrorist groups has tool to pursue uh, their specific geopolitical interests, which in many cases to generate uh, instability uh, in the Eurasian uh, region. In 2014, uh, some Israeli strategists, for example, produced uh, a plan with the title uh, How to Heart Iran Without uh, uh, high strikes and in this plan this plan was based uh, on fostering uh, the internal dissatisfaction uh, in Iran thanks to the Western uh, sanctions and to foster this uh, dissatisfaction especially from uh, uh, among the minority groups inside the territory of the Islamic Republic. The plan uh, mention, uh, mentions specifically the Kurdish minority, uh, the Azeri minorities, and some other groups uh, uh, such as uh, MEC again, and some other groups in Baluchistan. The target, of course, is to destabilize uh, Iran and maybe also to create. Uh, to uh, transform Iran in a puzzle of many different uh, states. We know, for example, that uh, agents of uh, Mossad and uh, CIA are training are pro and uh, providing logistic uh, and uh, equipment to some groups that again operates in Baluchistan uh, at the border uh, with uh, Iran and uh, Pakistan. Since Iran cannot really trust in a partnership with Europe to fight these threats, the only possibility, in my opinion, is to, is, uh, to build and improve a strong regional cooperation with its uh, neighbor uh, countries, again, such as Pakistan and, uh, and Turkey, first of all. Destroying uh, and fighting the global threats uh, and this specific uh, form of uh, terrorism with uh, specific uh, geopolitical uh, targets, which are uh, the 
geopolitical targets of uh, powers that are outside the region, um, in my opinion, is the best way to protect and foster the evolution of the global uh, order towards uh, mul multipolarity. Thank you. Well, we are uh, genuinely grateful of uh, Mr. Pereira elaborating more on uh, the nature of the Mujahideen Akalk or MEK. And uh, now uh, we are going to be honored to have uh, Mr. Jadi Tanasi, university professor and political commentator and journalist from Albania. Ladies and gentlemen, allow to me to introduce myself. I am Gheri Sanasi. I am an Albanian journalist specialized in investigative journalism. I also lecture at uh, Doros University, Alexander Moiseo. Well, about MEK, the infamous, the notorious uh, MEK, known also as uh, Rajavi Count. I'm not going uh, to discuss about MEK problems with Iran, their crimes and things like this. As an Albanian, as an Albanian patriot, I'm discussing about what MEK uh, represents in Albania. My opinion is that MEK is a security threat to my dear homeland, to my Albania. I am forwarding you several facts. Uh, almost one month ago, a special court called uh, Special Body Against Corruption and Organized Crime, SPAK in Albania, uh, issued a search warrant for homes, cars and offices of Iranian members of an NGO called Asila, uh, which had its headquarters in Tirana. Good. Uh, the search warrant was uh, signed by, by the Honorable Judge Etleva Teda, and by the public prosecutor, Mr. Vladimir Mar. Uh, there was something in this uh, search warrant. It was written black on white that 300 members of MEK based in the so-called Ashraf 3 camp in Manas, Duros municipality. Duros is the main port of Albania and the second city in my country. Were not anymore present in Albania they had gone to EU countries illegally because they have no passports, no travel documents, nothing. So, 300 ex MEK persons are roaming in European countries. Why they are a security th uh, threat to, Euro to European countries and of course to Albania? There are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of refugees in Europe and it's, a, it's something, but it's not a big deal. These 300 are special because they have either battlefield experience or they have formally been trained into military matters. Some of them have their hands stained with blood. It may be Iranian blood, Iraqi blood, what they call, call Gruk uh, and uh, Abd in Iraq, Kurdish blood, and a little bit of American blood too. So, some of them are murderers, some of them have, have battlefield experience, some of them have been trained in using weapons, ammunitions, explosives, booby traps, improvised explosive devices, etc., etc. And these people are roaming in European countries. They are somewhere in Europe, they are off the radar, uh, radar of the European law enforcing organizations, secret services and etc. This is a clear and present danger to NATO member countries. My Albania is a NATO member country, so we have exported to our allies a security threat. Instead of uh, exporting security, we have exported in quotation marks, uh, a security threat. And this is great. Uh, I am giving names, not just this uh, figure of 300 uh, ex MEK members in Europe. For example, Behzat Ebatsahi, 
Shah Dost Kubadi. They allegedly used to work as bakers in Tirana. They are not anymore in Tirana, the capital city of Albania. They are somewhere in Europe. Uh, their bakery had an identification numbers for the purpose of our inner revenue office. The identification number is Mike Oscar 2114023 Mike. So I'm giving names and identification numbers, not just words. Uh, another thing, several persons from January uh, up to now, there are a dozen of them, have crossed illegally to Europe, mainly Greece, and they are using Greece as a kind of springboard to reach other European countries, Germany, France, Sweden, etc., etc. I'm giving names. Navid Danapar, he crossed to Greece from January up to now, huh? and maybe he has managed to reach uh, Germany. Hadi Arbadi, another name. Daigush Naga, Nagapu, Nagapi, also to Greece. Asgar Kalatech, also to Greece. There is a very nice uh, video of, of Asgar picking uh, onions in the uh, somewhere in uh, Attica prefecture, in the outskirts of Athens. Uh, other names, Bijan Kademi and uh, Somara Bazazian. They, mar they quitted uh, MEK, they married in Tirana, and MEK, in order to shut their mouths up, paid money to Afghan mafia and Albanian mafia, and they were spirited away into Greece, meaning they crossed illegally the land border from Albania to Greece. Their destination is Germany. I don't know whether they have reached Germany or not. Together with them is their brother, the brother of Somara, Mehrdar Bazazian. So, ladies and gentlemen, I offered names, not just words. All these persons and more and several others from January up to now crossed illegally Albanian border. This is a criminal offense in Albania. It is a kind of the secreto di pulcinella, as the Italians say, so everybody knows that MEK is in collusion with Albanian mafia and Afghan mafia in Greece especially Dahri speaking Afghan nationals, in order to uh, run, to organize a ring of uh, smuggling human beings, in this case, ex-MEK members. This is a threat to Europe. As I said before, my Albania is exporting terrorists, or let us be more polite, ex-terrorists to Europe. And this is problematic because the good name of Albania is stained by such ex-terrorists. And it's not only them. It's not only them. This is an instance, a kind of snapshot of the danger to Europe. Here, MEK is, like, here in Albania, I mean, is like a cancer growth. They have penetrated media. They've penetrated uh, the rural areas of Duras municipality, especially the administrative unit of Manus, where their Ashraf Sri camp uh, is set up. So they've penetrated the Albanian economy. They've uh, been caught uh, red-handed committing crimes, money laundering, of course. An Albanian judge uh, closed down the case because they were not terrorists, they were freedom fighters, so freedom fighters can launder money in my country, very strange thing. Uh, they, they have been uh, caught uh, smuggling people, uh, human beings uh, trafficking, even uh, excellent names uh, in the ranks of MEK, the sister of the notorious uh, Abrishamchi, Nigal, Nigel, what's her name? They have been caught uh, running drugs, I mean A-class drugs, not just cannabis. Uh, yet uh, our judges and our prosecutors have uh, connived at their activity, closing down the cases, because somebody, maybe the god himself, one of or two embassies, foreign embassies in Tirana, has intervened in their favor. 
members and even commanders of MEK have resorted also to, to petty crime burglaries. One of them was arrested. Uh, he used to be his uh, battle name was Kak Abel in Turkish. Kak Abel, and uh, he used to be a very notorious criminal, 30 years and something ago. Now he became a petty thief. He organized a small gang of Albanian youngsters uh, doing burglaries in the outskirts of Tirana and also in the municip municipality of Kamas. Uh, close to Tirana, the capital city of Albania. So they have become a kind of maternity home, I mean Ashraf Trikam, for crime. Running drugs, uh, trafficking human beings, burglaries, let alone organizing spy rings allegedly to protect themselves from Iran. Yet our judges, our prosecutors, our counter-terrorism police, special directorate of police, are not investigating them, are conniving at their activities, damaging the security of Albania, yet they are focusing on, on ex-members of MEK who do not want anymore to become jihadists, who do not want anymore to fight against Iranian people to change the regime there in Tehran, who want to live a normal life in Tehran, to enjoy themselves, to work, to eat, to go to cinema, to go swimming, to go skiing, to play football, maybe to fall in love and to marry Albanian girls. The only thing they do not want, those who have separated from uh, Rajabi's uh, cult, is they do not want anymore to do jihadi work, to become Mujahideen, to fight against Iranian people in order to change the regime in Tehran. Our police, especially counter-terrorism police, is focusing on them. There are a lot of words, a lot of propaganda and a lot of money going to Albanian media to portray them as criminals, spies, Iranian spies, Iranian terrorists. The fact is that when the police search their flats, their cars, their offices, found no drugs, no weapons, no ammunition, no explosive, no nothing. Even they did not find even large sums of money. Maximum 1300 euros, which is not something big in Albania. They absolutely found nothing. Of course, the police is uh, mobile phones, laptops, uh, desktops, etc. But they found nothing. And it's not the first time that police, uh, our police, boasts of uh, busting a, a ring of spies or terrorists coming from Iran and arresting nobody, seizing no weapons, no ammunition, no explosives, no money, seizing no cars, uh, no nothing, no uh, real estate, absolutely no nothing. So this is the problem. We pay taxes as Albanians because we want to be protected by our police force, by our secret service, against threats and we are not protecting a bunch of ex-terrorists some uh, 2500 of them in manas between tirana the capital city and Doris, the main port of albania are running amok of course most of these people in that infamous camp called ashraf are victims they are serfs of miriam rajavi that uh, cult leader yet there are criminals among them, there are people who have grossly violated human rights. When I say grossly violated human rights, I mean running down kids, old, old folk, pregnant women with the tracks of T-55 tanks or using their Cascavel uh, uh, self-propelled artillery to run down uh, defenseless civilians in Kurdistan, Iraqi Kurdistan, and also near Basra and the port of Umkasar in Iraq. Such criminals are in manners in my country. Is it a security threat to my country? I leave it to you. Is it a security threat to NATO and Albania is a NATO member? I leave it to you to judge. I consider it a security threat to my country, a security threat to our allies in NATO, and all this is done to please the whims of an old stateless woman called Miriam Rajavi. 
Of course, there are powerful lobbies behind her, a lot of money, oil money, and a lot of expertise from at least uh, three foreign embassies in Tirana, at least three. Uh, yet, Albania belongs to Albanians, and we as Albanians have no right to jeopardize, uh, to risk the security of our allies, the, the other uh, member states of NATO. We should export security, we should not export ex-terrorism. This is my idea, ladies and gentlemen. I offered a few facts, of course, I have more facts, more photos, documents, etc., etc. Yet, I believe even this is enough to raise a bell of alarm in Europe. I'm not uh, dealing here what they have done to Iranian people or to the Iraqi people. This is something else. It takes time to deal with it in the detail. I dealt only with and very briefly, I repeat it very briefly, only with the security threat MEK Rajavi cult poses to Albania and to Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, dear viewers. Uh, we're going to be back with you in five minutes with the rest of our meeting and with our two other uh, respected uh, speakers.